want to take a look at two fairly disconnected topics here. Those being the second fundamental theorem of calculus and net change. First of all, let's take a look at the accumulation function big F of x is equal to the definite integral from 3 to x of 4t cubed plus 3t dt. Let's find big F prime. All right, so first of all, we can come up with a better expression for what f of x is because it's a definite integral when we integrate uh, 4t cubed plus 3t we should have t to the fourth plus 3 halves t squared and then we'll evaluate this from 3 to x so we plug in x first and we'll have x to the fourth plus 3 halves x squared and then subtract, plugging in 3, 3 to the 4th is 81, and 3 halves times 9. Finally, we simplify this, and we'll have x to the 4th plus 3 halves x squared minus 148.5. Now, we weren't asked to find out what f is. We are asked to find out what f is prime is. And now when we take the derivative of this, we get 4x to the third plus 3x, and the constant will be zero. What the interesting part is, of course, um, this expression sure looks awfully familiar to 4t cubed plus 3t. And that is what the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us, is that if we have a continuous function on any interval containing a, then for every x on that interval, the derivative of the integral from a to x of f of t dt is just going to be f of x. So if we know f of x is the integral from pi to x of t cosine of t dt, trying to integrate that is very difficult to do. But when we're asked to find out the first derivative, that part is very easy because all we have to do is take all those t's that are in there and change them to x's. It gets a little bit more complicated when that limit of integration isn't x. It's some other expression of x. That's because the second fundamental theorem of calculus talks about that definite integral going from a value up to just x, not x cubed. So one thing that we can do is do a little u substitution. So I'm going to let u be that x to the third. Right. Then we'll have f of u is the integral from pi to u times sine of t dt. Right. And we still want to find f prime of x though. So one thing that we can pay attention to is what is f prime of x? You know, using that other notation, that would be df dx. And we saw with u substitution and the chain rule that that is equivalent to df du times du dx, or f prime at u times u prime at x. So, Let's go back over here. When we want to find f prime of u, so our f prime of x is going to be f prime of u. f prime of u from the second fundamental theorem of calculus is just uh, sine of u times u prime of x. Well, u of x is x to the third, so the derivative of that would be 3x squared. Substituting for u, then we would end up with 3x squared times the sine of x cubed. So we do have this extra piece uh, that follows directly from the chain rule. Now why this is, uh, is very important, uh, I'm uncertain. But I do know that when I look at uh, AP calculus exams, I do see uh, questions uh, involving the second fundamental theorem of calculus on there. Uh, the second idea I want to talk about is net change and the net change theorem. 
uh, it says that if f prime is a rate of change in a quantity f on the interval from a to b, then the net change in f over that interval is given by the definite integral of f prime, which when we kind of start playing with this, it should make sense because the definite integral of f prime is going to be that original function f evaluated from a to b, which would be big F at B minus big F at A. Right? And um, when we think about what these quantities are, F of B, that would be the ending amount. Uh, and F at A, that would be the starting amount. And if we found the difference between what we ended up with and what we started with, that would be the change in F from beginning to end. Seems simple enough, but the, the really clever thing here is that what, we, um, what we're taking the integral of is a rate of change. And that's what gets, uh, gets touched on quite a bit in these types of problems. So let's consider an example where a uh, chemical flows into a water treatment facility at a rate of R of T is equal to 180 plus 3T milliliters per minute. 4t being on the interval from 0 to 60 minutes. So over this one hour, we have a variable rate of change. That r of t is a rate of change. That's what's very important. So when we want to find out how much of that chemical flowed into the facility over the first 10 minutes, that amount is going to be the integral from 0 to 20 of the rate of change. And we know how to calculate that. The integral of 180 uh, plus 3t is 180t plus 3 halves t squared. And we'll evaluate from 0 to 20. So if we plug in 20, we'll have 180 times 20 plus 3 halves times 20 squared minus 180 times 0 plus 3 halves times 0 squared then this should all simplify to 300. Now 300 what? If we go back to the question, um, how much, uh, we can kind of just deduce what the units should be, but I want to take a closer look. Uh, going back to the uh, original line of work here, there's three parts to this problem. And let's kind of analyze some, some units to see what kind of units we should come up with. Now when we're talking about an integral, an integral is a sum, like the Riemann sums. So uh, this part, the integral from 0 to 20, that is just talking about how wide our interval is. All right? it's, it's talking about a sum. We're going to add a bunch of stuff together. All right? But when we're talking about the 180 plus 3t, that was our rate of change. And we were told that that was measured in milliliters per minute. dt is... Uh, change in time, all right, the differential with respect to time. T is time, and our times are measured in minutes. When we cancel everything here, we see that what we end up with is milliliters, and that is what our units on our answer should be, 300 milliliters. Uh, just for practice, let's try uh, the same example. This time, how much of uh, the chemical flowed into the facility over the last 20 minutes? All right, and since we're talking about our time covering an hour, the last 20 minutes would be from 40 to 60. And we're going to take our rate of change function. When we calculate it, we'll still end up with the same integral, just evaluating from 40 to 60 this time. Uh, when it's all said and done, and you plug in 60 first, And then subtract uh, what we get when we plug in 40. I'm not going to go through it all. But what you should end up with is 600. And of course, we should include our units, 600 milliliters.